Uh, hello, my name is Dr. Matthew Andrews. I'm the program director for McLaren Macomb uh, Hospital in Mount Clemens. Uh, this is the former uh, current residency program. Uh, this is a recorded PowerPoint uh, that discusses some of the more salient um, uh, features of our program. A lot of the uh, information that's on like the Casper PDF and things like that is pretty readily available with regards to rotation schedules and resident salary uh, benefits, things like that. But I wanted to uh, give a little bit more uh, in-depth um, description of our program because this is kind of an oddball year, of course, and uh, student experiences I know are pretty limited in a lot of places. Uh, so, uh, and a lot of you know students have not had the opportunity to visit our program to be able to uh, see what our resident life is like um, on a daily basis. So I wanted to, uh, you know, throw this together to kind of discuss a little bit with regards to uh, what our program is like and what to expect um, uh, by applying here. Um, this is me. Uh, I'm the program director. Um, I took over this program in July. Uh, we've gone through quite a few changes um, over the past few years. Our ancestral home was uh, Kern Hospital, uh, which became uh, Michigan Surgical Hospital after being uh, bought a couple times um, over the years. And that facility closed um, about uh, a little over two years ago, uh, or they uh, decided to divest themselves of medical education. So we moved the program to Surgeon's Choice Medical Center in Southfield. Um, and I was the assistant director for the uh, entire duration of this. And my, uh, my partner, Kyle Sumblad was the uh, program director um, with everything that we went through. And then of course, with the COVID shutdowns back in uh, March, April of this year, we had a pretty significant loss of surgical volume and the program was actually at risk of closure. Um, and we were going to merge with McLaren Oakland. Um, however, the uh, administration of McLaren Health got involved and said from a strategic standpoint, it actually makes sense to uh, develop and generate a program at McLaren Macomb Hospital. Uh, so they basically took our program, picked it up and moved it over there. Uh, and uh, I wake up every day, you know, thankful for this ent entire process. You know, pinch me, I'm dreaming. This was uh, a dream come true for our program because we have fabulous uh, access to resources. Uh, McLaren has deep pockets. They are very supportive of podiatric medical education. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities that our residents will have that they probably would not have otherwise had um, depending on how the, uh, the program would have changed and evolved. Uh, so um, I took over this uh, program in July and uh, so we are considered a transferred program um, and we are currently seeking uh, three PGY1 residents through the match uh, and then we also have some open uh, PGY2 and one PGY3 uh, spots available which we will try to fill this next coming year. Um, <clears throat> I am alumni of the program myself. I graduated from this program in 2014. Uh, where I, I walked in uh, the door on July 1 of 2014 as the assistant program director. Um, and like I said, Dr. Sumblad was the previous director and, and who's, who's now my partner. So um, somebody that I've worked very closely with and to be able to transition this program, it's been a relatively seamless process. Um, I am board certified uh, by the American Board of Foot and Ankle Surgery in both foot and RRA. Um, I am a busy practitioner as well. Um, I have uh, a couple offices um, in addition to uh, the, my residency director uh, responsibilities. Uh, so um, I'm pretty busy and I, I feel it's important as a program director that uh, to be uh, actively involved. You know, I think um, any uh, program where the, the, the program director just kind of sits on a golden throne and uh, uh, runs the show uh, is probably going to be an inadequate experience uh, compared to uh, someone like me who's actually a physician in the trenches. You know, I'm out there every day doing, uh, you know, ingrown toenails and warts in my office just as much as we are bunion surgery and ankle fractures and things like that. Um, uh, my past, um, I did do uh, between active and reserve time about 12 years in the U.S. Army. Um, so I started at Shoal uh, when I was 27 years old. So I was a little bit of a non-traditional student, but by the time I started, I had two undergraduate degrees, a master's degree, and three combat deployments. Uh, so I had a pretty active um, career prior to medicine. Um, personally about me, um, I do a lot of uh, teaching and lecturing. Um, I uh, prefer the Socratic method approach uh, with regards to uh, training residents. Uh, while knowing academic minutia and, and, you know, for example, 20 different ways to do a bunion, um, those types of things are important. I'm more interested in seeing how you think and how you approach uh, things as a physician. Uh, a lot of 
uh, surgical procedures we do can be done by a relatively well-trained technician. But you know, where the rubber meets the road as a physician is, you know, what happens when things don't go as planned or don't go as expected. Um, you know, how do you think on the fly? How do you work your way through uh, moderately complex surgical problems? And uh, being able to develop residents as independent uh, decision makers and thinkers—that's uh, uh, really um, what I feel the strength of our program is. Uh, the hospital itself is um, uh, moderate to large uh, hospital. We've got 288 beds. It is a level two trauma center. Um, this building on uh, this picture on the right here is the brand new um, addition to the hospital, which includes a new ER um, and a new uh, GME center. So that's offices of the GME staff, including um, all of the support staff. Uh, we have resident call rooms. This is all brand new. Uh, lecture rooms, consultation rooms, conference rooms. We have all of our academic activities uh, primarily in this area. Um, this literally just opened in June of this year. Uh, so uh, we have very, very nice facilities that's very up to date, um, including things like lounges and uh, an exercise room for residents, things like that. Uh, McLaren Macomb also has uh, residency programs in several other specialties, um, some of which we work very closely with. Uh, so we have uh, uh, cardiology as a fellowship program, which includes interventional cardiology, but we also work with the general surgery services, uh, which do, uh, does cover uh, vascular procedures as well. Um, and then we are one of uh, a few programs in Michigan that does have a organic orthopedic surgery residency program. Uh, the concern with a hospital that has an orthopedics program is, you know, uh, do you run into conflicts with a podiatry service, um, especially a service that's doing uh, full scope lower extremity surgery like we are, where, you know, we're doing ankle fractures and calcaneus fractures and um, occasionally things like external fixation and ankle replacements and larger orthopedic procedures that generally will involve an admission to the hospital. Um, this is uh, not much of an issue for us. Uh, the orthopedic surgery uh, department, uh, the orthopedists and the trauma orthopedists do uh, do lower extremity. Uh, they will do metatarsal fractures, ankle fractures, etc. Um, however, they do not have a, um, a dedicated um, foot and ankle fellowship trained orthopedist. Uh, and then we also, uh, as residents, most of those procedures that will come to the ER, our residents can scrub them anyway with the orthopedic uh, surgery service. Um, one of the benefits of uh, McLaren Macomb is it, it is a DO training institution. And uh, if you've had any experience working in these types of institutions, the uh, medical education staff and the uh, everybody is, is, is um, almost unnecessarily friendly. Um, it's a very positive environment. Um, and it's been an excellent um, environment for our residents to train in. Uh, we also cover cases at other facilities. Obviously, we do. Um, we cover everything at McLaren Macomb Hospital. We have about 16 podiatrists that are on staff here. Um, we also work at Premier Surgery Center. So these are my top two uh, places where I perform most of my procedures at the hospital itself and also at Premier, which is in Clinton Township. It's about four or five miles away. Um, we also still cover procedures at Insight Surgical Hospital. We do have an active staff of about 30 podiatrists um, at Insight, which is the former Kern uh, Hospital uh, in Warren. Um, some of those uh, doctors we see on a weekly basis, some of them we see maybe every three months or so. So it's a really good mix. And a lot of the docs there are insistent upon uh, the residents doing a good portion of the cases. So you get a lot of hands-on experience uh, very early on in your training. Uh, Surgeon's Choice, where uh, our program was housed for a year, they have um, their main campus in Southfield, but also a satellite surgery center in uh, Warren, which is about um, a mile and a half from my office in Sterling Heights. Uh, we also cover uh, the Detroit uh, VA, uh, so our uh, second year residents will generally spend a month at a time at the VA, uh, which includes all uh, surgery cases and uh, inpatient uh, work. So uh, when you're on the VA service, you're essentially just there for the entire month. Um, that's more of an eight to five uh, type of uh, clinic and surgery um, experience. Um, the uh, docs down there are terrific to work with. and. Uh, the service is pretty robust. Anything that's uh, uh, bigger surgery procedures within the state of Michigan all gets funneled into Detroit for surgery. Um, we also have uh, agreements with McLaren Lansing. Uh, we work with Dr. Carl Dunn out there. Um, however, uh, he is in the process of possibly developing his own uh, program out that way. Uh, so, but uh, for the time being, we still cover cases um, out that way. And then we also have agreements with uh, McLaren Port Huron and McLaren Lapeer. Uh, currently, we do not have uh, resident staff uh, really available to cover cases in those areas, but uh, as we uh, grow and expand, 
uh, we've got a lot of different places we can do surgery. Uh, and then also Lake Surgery Center in Commerce Township, which is on the west uh, northwest side of uh, suburban Detroit. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, uh, cases, and uh, we're in an unfortunate uh, problem now where we've got, you know, in some instances, uh, more cases than we can cover. Uh, it's a good problem to have, uh, but when we're at our full complement of nine residents, uh, we should have more than enough cases uh, for everybody. And our volume is uh, maintained uh, fairly well, even in the case of uh, the, uh, the COVID shutdowns which I know is a concern for a lot of people. You know, you want to go to a, a hospital that's going to be able to still maintain their surgical volume, even if uh, the low, state and local governments um, you know, decide that, you know, to cancel elective procedures, for example. Um, some highlights of our program. Um, we are above average for case volume. Um, we are the oldest continually running residency program in the United States. Uh, this program was started as Civic Hospital and the first class of residents graduated, uh, I believe, in the mid-1950s. So we've been operating for a long time. Um, Civic Hospital was on West Grand Boulevard in Detroit. Um, and then uh, after a number of years, a group of uh, surgically trained podiatrists, they uh, pulled their money and they uh, purchased uh, land and built Kern Hospital in Warren, uh, which um, it still stands today, the, the facility does, and it's now rebranded as Insight Surgical Hospital. Uh, but we have a, a pretty significant alumni network. Uh, we have alumni that have been presidents of podiatric medical schools and deans, uh, people who have been leaders in research, um, and then um, highly successful practitioners because we you know, teach not just surgery, but also practice management experience. And um, you know, when you graduate from this program, I want you to be able to hit the ground running, to be able to um, you know, be financially successful right away, and to be able to essentially uh, develop uh, a modern surgical practice as you see fit. Um, we do get a good practice management experience, both in private offices of myself and some of the other doctors that we work with, and then also through our resident clinic, which is on Tuesday afternoons right now, uh, where we see a lot of things that will be followed. Some, uh, you know, for example, like a fracture that comes through the ER that needs casting, uh, or uh, people that are referred for wound care, diabetic foot evaluations, and we see a very wide variety of stuff. And it's largely a surgical referral clinic, so we do do a number of uh, surgery procedures out of there as well. Um, we do have access to the morgue um, at the hospital uh, where uh, we have the ability to do uh, labs, um, dissections, um, uh, with pretty good flexibility uh, as far as scheduling. Um, and we also have a, uh, a nice uh, GME support staff. Uh, so we've got um, good quality of life uh, resources for residents as well as academic resources as well, uh, such as library access. Um, access to board preparation software like board wizards and board vitals. Um, and then we also um, have opportunities for, for residents to participate in um, a lot of academic activities that are sort of combined among programs in Detroit. Uh, Detroit's a big hub for uh, podiatry training, um, obviously, with uh, several programs here. And we have uh, inter-facility uh, um, collaborations that we do, such as we uh, typically will do a complication seminar where residents can present uh, uh, any kind of cases uh, that have had complications and how they were managed. So very similar to like a mor morbidity mortality conference. Um, we have the uh, Michigan Podiatric Medical Association, the MPMA meeting in um, uh, typically the end of January, early February. Uh, so that's a, a good opportunity for residents to present either research or um, case presentations where they actually have cash prizes awarded and things like that. Um, our academic program is very rigorous. Um, my goal is to develop uh, this program as one of the premier academic programs um, in the state for sure, but also in the country. Uh, we have a, a, a pretty well-defined curriculum for uh, board review with regards to the American Board of Foot and Ankle Surgery uh, qualification exams. Um, many of our residents do also take the American Board of Podiatric Medicine um, exams. Um, I am not uh, board certified in ABPM. Um, I'm only board certified in ABFAS. Uh, but the primary function of a surgery residency is to train you as uh, surgeons for modern practice. Uh, so this is kind of our focus. Uh, we have a weekly conference on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. Um, Tuesdays is my day where I lecture. Um, and then Wednesday, or I'm sorry, Thursdays will typically be uh, where the, the residents offer um, case presentations and we uh, discuss cases or we have um, specific topics that are discussed, such as, you know, what is the you know, standard of care for ankle arthritis, for example. 
Um, we also have a monthly journal review where we go through an entire issue uh, of a journal and we will review several articles. This typically takes place in the third or fourth Monday uh, of the uh, month in the evening. Uh, so we have uh, usually bring in uh, something to eat and uh, go through uh, several journal articles and, and uh, have a discussion uh, with regards to their um, academic prowess, their usefulness, um, and whether or not it's uh, uh, appropriate literature to contribute to the uh, the body of knowledge at large. Uh, we do have a social journal club typically at the last Wednesday of the month. We have Glamour reviews. We have a wonderful robust library uh, with good access um, to a lot of different uh, publishers so we can get access to journal articles, to books and other periodicals. Um, through uh, the McLaren account. Um, we also have board review software, like I previously mentioned, um, several different research projects that are currently ongoing. Um, and then also uh, residency uh, at a McLaren facility comes with a, a, uh, an adjunct faculty appointment to Michigan State University. So, uh, so you uh, will start essentially your residency training with a, an academic faculty rank uh, through Michigan State. Um, they also have the, uh, the SCS, which is the statewide campus system. They have several different Zoom lectures uh, currently uh, that are uh, throughout uh, McLaren and throughout the Michigan State. So both the College of Human Medicine, the College of Osteopathic Medicine, or they have a number of different review topics. Um, Wednesdays are generally big days for that, but they'll also do things like trauma conferences and things like that. Um, here's what we're looking for. Um, obviously, we want residents who have a, a, an appreciable GPA, you know, good credentials. They had some social activities possibly within uh, podiatric medical schools. Uh, but I'm looking for people that are self-motivated. Um, I can uh, fix dumb, uh, but I have a harder time fixing lazy, um, if you will. So people who are self-motivated, uh, who have a desire to learn, and uh, who are willing to be team players. Um, academic credentials are impressive, but I'm more imp impressed by somebody who will get along well with our group, and that's really what we're looking for. Um, and then also being on time. Uh, that, that's kind of a big thing for me, because uh, you know nobody will remember the, the 30 times you showed up early, but they'll remember the one time you showed up late. Um, so if you're trying to impress people, especially as uh, uh, podiatric medical students <laughs> trying to get a residency program, um, that, that goes a long way. Um, our interviews will be held during the traditional um, uh, interview time, which is going to be the, uh, the first full weekend of January. It's going to be probably a Thursday through Saturday. Um, these will be uh, scheduled. Uh, there's 7 a.m. to uh, 7 p.m. is our, our window. Um, these will all be conducted through Zoom as well. Um, if for whatever reason uh, you don't have access to Zoom, you can certainly get a hold of me and we can make arrangements for other uh, virtual platforms um, uh, such as like the uh, Citrix WebEx or possibly Microsoft Teams as well. Um, the interview itself, our interviews are relatively low pressure. There's uh, my interview uh, cases, uh, some of them are you know, moderate in complexity with regards to their academic uh, strength, but uh, I'm not really, you know, there's no real right or wrong answers. I'm looking for, um, you know, how you think your way through a problem. And, you know, some of them are straightforward and some of them are not so straightforward. Um, and then we do have some uh, some social questions as well. There's, you know, really just to kind of you know, try to get an idea uh, of, of who you are and uh, what you might uh, be able to include or bring into our residency training program. Um, this has, uh, of course, been an oddball year. Um, I would much prefer to do in-person interviews like we've done um, in Frisco, Texas for the past you know, eight or nine years that I've been going down there. Um, but uh, things will be a little bit different um, uh, through uh, virtual this year. But by all means, I'm very approachable. Feel free to email me anytime if you have any questions about our program, about the area, uh, about um, how interviews are going to work. Um, if you want to get in touch with one of our current residents um, for any specific questions, that's not a problem. Just email me. I can pass it along. Um, you can also email uh, uh, Deb Perkowski, who is our um, uh, program administrator. Um, she's fantastic and we'll get back to you right away. Um, so if you have any you know, questions, concerns whatsoever, you know, by all means, I am uh, more than available. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, uh, uh, I'm going to post this video on my YouTube channel, so feel free to check out. Uh, uh, we have some procedures where I've worn a GoPro camera on my head uh, and then uh, you know, kind of talk through different surgical procedures and kind of concatenate them and do a shortened version, um, which is uh, useful, I think, for, for trainees. Um, to kind of see some of the stuff that we do. Um, anyway, uh, feel free to um, email me. Um, this um, video will go out in an email to everybody that we've designated for interviews. Um, but you know, by all means, this is an open channel. Feel free to get in touch with me anytime.